Before I run this clip, I would just like to say that I was at Euroblack Germany. I had an awesome time. Huge thanks to the guys at Amada Scandinavia, Philip, Peter, Ni Ena Goa Gubar, Jengning and Fixad. Thank you. Also, huge thanks to Kimla, Jacob, Adrian. I had a blast. We <laughs> talked about some really cool stuff. So let's see where this goes. But anyway, big thanks. For the second time tonight, sleep tight, my friends. So coming in Friday morning. <whistles> all right, all right. So it's Sunday today and I'm here yet again, swapping out two sheets. Putting two new ones on there and then I'm off. So uh, yeah, the ethanol solution has been working great. Zero problems so far. Uh, where was I in the last video? I was talking about the packing table and stuff. So let's, let's go there. So I did get the packing table up. What's missing is the, uh, the plastic for wrapping and the tape dispensers and stuff. This cabin is gonna be holding all of that, those types of things. Uh, there's gonna be a computer here where I can bake my papers so that it prints the label. This new shelf if, is for the customer's products. I did finally get this place sort of sorted. It, it, it's, there's quite a ways to go, but it's a lot better. This is gonna be a tapping station. The lights have been moved so, so they are just above the tables. There's pressurized uh, air guns everywhere. I put these trash cans here so you can just sweep stuff into there. Easy to pull out and go empty. Same over there. Clinching nuts and rivets and all that kind of stuff is gonna be there. This is a new compressor. Same size as the last one, four kilowatts. Hopefully this is gonna be awesome. It looks awesome anyway. Of course, I have automated the shutting off of this system, the, the dryer and the, the pressurized L line with a valve there. That is just a water oil separator. The water just drips down into this trash can for now. Yeah, that's gonna turn itself off in like a minute. So, 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 so. Yeah, where were we? So, like we talked about before this green light that only shines when the spindle is standing still and when that shines this time delay relay has power it's not supposed to be here of course it just i put it there for now because there were already pre-made tapped holes here for some reason but knowing myself it's probably going to be like this for quite a while because it's working so good so this is not a time delay as in a delay before turning off something it's the opposite so when it gets power it is now about an hour before it activates its output that output is using that radio transmitter to send a signal to the receiver that is behind this wall and then that cuts power to the dryer that valve and also the spindle cooler and since the extractor already is automated the same way, everything is pretty much turned off except the machine itself. And th this one hardly draws any power when it's just standing there. So super sweet, that automation just works so great. That means I can leave it running and know that it's gonna be off when I get back. So in the last video, I talked about fixing some small things small things before going through the automation and everything Th those small things weren't necessarily so small when it comes to solving them it took quite a bit of brain power and time and whatnot and those problems were some worse than others some not really problems but you know quality of life improvements and whatnot but anybody should be able to run the production here that's the goal one of the tiny things was when importing a file 
the one of the problem was it was being placed right on top of whatever uh, vectors were already here pc cam has been fixed updated so it doesn't do that anymore lucas at kimla gave me a tip about looking into a plotting flag that is 290 meaning that in the dxf if you find the correct location you can put in a 290 line change and a zero that means that layer will not be plotted by by default so me having to deselect all of the bending lines and text and whatnot that is no longer necessary so anybody who has that paper that's being printed can just scan it and it's going to place it on the, t on the table and automatically import it so i'm not going to be nobody needs to do anything pretty much and that is just awesome another problem was holes small holes if if pc cam gets to auto generate the the gg code it's gonna choose a four millimeter single flute that's a nice middle ground sweet spot i'd say and there's holes that are under four millimeters in diameter that end mill is not gonna fit in there and that means it's just gonna skip those holes it's not gonna say anything it's just not gonna cut them and that is also true well it was for vector v quarter as, lo as long as i had that or used that so what i had to do was really dissect the dxf file isolate and find all the holes that are in the dxf under the standard hole standard hole layer analyze the hole diameter and if it is between three and four millimeters in diameter change the name of the layer that that hole is currently on so that the kimla can differentiate the hole and use a three millimeter end mill instead to cut that hole the same thing if the hole was between two and three millimeter it's gonna use a two millimeter end mill and cut it it works great finally so that problem doesn't exist anymore the third problem was if you design in inventor or fusion and you export it as a step file yada yada typically you're not gonna export threads modeled it's just gonna be a hole of a specific diameter so what i had to do to make sure that pc cam can identify these holes as threaded holes was to give the script a really narrow range so let's say you're gonna put in an m8 it's, it's gonna be 6.672 to 6.681 or something something along those lines so quite narrow so mistakes should be very few that means if I design a part or anybody can design a part with threaded holes they use fusion or inventor to make those holes threaded and I import it and run it through my automation it's gonna find all of those holes from m3 to m12 and automatically generate the g-code programs to cut them perfect every time works so nice so this is getting scary good literally anybody can import a file run the automation take the paper scan it auto generate the code when it's done it's done take that piece and the paper scan it there follow the screen it's done go to the packing table scan it there pack the product put on the label put it on the shelf and if it's going away for powder coating or surface treatment or whatever i'm gonna have three folders here probably three different scanners too so that i scan the paper and put it in this folder that way the computer knows when i sent it away for surface treatment or whatever it was what's gonna take this business this shop to the next level i've realized after my week there in or days in in germany was a robot that's gonna take this from a shop to a factory because 
here I am for the 10th time this weekend swapping sheets and it's really luxurious I know that I can run two sheets that's really good it's two and a half hours or something before I need to be back but if I had a robot to scoop up the HDF and the aluminum drop that off on a pallet take a new HDF and a aluminum sheet whatever thickness put it back there and doink imagine that and I've been looking into these older ABB robots. They are manufactured here in Västerås, Sweden, kind of like half an hour away from here. They are not that expensive, actually, if you look at late 90s, early 2000s robots. And their programming language can... Well, you can use ActiveX, which means I can use my Visual Basic script to communicate with it. So. I think you know what I'm referring to here. Imagine a world where my automation not only programs the router and the bender, but also the robots. <laughs> that sounds scary good. Okay, I'm <clears throat> probably forgetting a bunch of stuff, but um, Rogue CNC asked about uh, fades and spades. And if I was any serious more serious about this youtube thing then i should make like a proper video but that's not gonna happen you probably guessed that by now all i can tell you is that up to four millimeters aluminum i'm running 0.1 chip load 24k rpm four millimeter l mil of course one pass uh, for five millimeters and up i typically run a six millimeter diameter single flute coated crown noria also uh, and I run 50, 60 millimeters per second, sometimes 75, 80, depends. But um, yeah, single pass in eight millimeters aluminum to just, just shred it. Works a treat. Um, I am using almost all, only Crown Noria just because I know them so well. These are four millimeters. These are coded, but it's the older coding, not their superior range, because those were so finicky. They, they kept breaking on me. But those look more like this coding, the, the superior ones. But I saw that Oerlikon actually has started offering that type of coding. So I'm going to send off a bunch of these uncoded end mills for that coding. And we'll see, we'll test it, and I'll report back to you. The results of that it's sunday i'm gonna load two sheets and get out of here talk to you later bye bye